Hello everyone. The Tech Archives project began four years ago to record Ireland's encounters with information technologies in the 20th century. I'd like to explain how it's evolved since then and why it has outgrown the original plan. First though, I'd like to show you some curios that we've picked up along the way. This is part of the first code that was written for the first computer in Ireland. HEC stands for Hollerith Electronic Computer. The Shure company installed one in the 1950s at its beat processing factory in Thurlis. This program used computer memory on a rotating magnetic drum to calculate payments for sugar growers. The company, however, decided not to implement this version. The code sheet that you see here was, nonetheless, the first computer application in the country, and we have therefore digitised it for long-term preservation. This sketch dates from 1985. It comes from a meeting at the National Science Foundation in Washington, which is planning a new network for research centres across the US. The manager of this project, Dennis Jennings, was on secondment from University College Dublin. Dennis suggested that the network should use something called the Internet Protocol because it would connect systems in all the different locations with each other, instead of only giving them access to a supercomputer. He used this sketch to explain what Internet meant. The project resulted in the world's first internet implementation. Dennis was one of the founders of Tech Archives and we have recorded his experiences with the early internet. In 1991, a Dublin company called Aldiscon unveiled the world's first text messaging system and this was the product architecture. No one had yet built a digital mobile network. In 1991, the service providers were focused on voice telephony and had little interest in short message services but texting took off in a big way some years later. We've documented this story with the recollections of Joe Cunningham, Aldiscon's development manager. It would have been very easy for material like this to get lost or be forgotten. These objects were not created as formal records and obviously not as works of art. Their context and historical importance are not self-evident. The only reason that they exist today is because people kept them for personal reasons. Tech Archives now offers a permanent home for digital objects like these. This is me speaking at the launch of the project in 2016 in front of an audience of internet and software veterans. That event also marked the 25th anniversary of the first connection from Ireland to the internet. Tech Archives started by asking IT people to record their personal stories. More than 70 authors have created testimonies to date. One lesson that we learned very quickly, though, was that it was much easier to obtain testimonies from people who were active in the 1960s and 1970s than in later decades. We have gradually expanded the range of themes for timelines and testimonies. Why choose these ones? First, because of the people who were willing to get involved with Tech Archives. And second, because we wanted to concentrate on areas where Ireland made a significant contribution to global developments, or where the Irish experience with the technology was distinctive in some way. It became increasingly evident that digital objects were even more easily forgotten than personal experiences. I learned very quickly that the visual record of 20th century IT as a whole is surprisingly poor. For example, it's very difficult to obtain photographs to illustrate the testimonies, even when we work closely with the authors and check all the obvious sources. I've been told, for example, that there was only ever a single photograph of that first computer in the sugar factory. No copy has yet come to light. To illustrate this problem, here are some typical images from print publications. Public relations photographers always preferred taking pictures of men in suits to pictures of computer installations. So this 1968 piece about computing at Jacobs shows men in suits with boxes of biscuits. Carr's advertisement tells us more about its premises than about its technologies, and the System Dynamics cartoon avoid explaining what its factory management software actually did. The scarcity of images of 20th century software is a major concern. It's vital that we salvage and catalogue pictures that show how users saw the applications on their screens. This realisation shifted the focus for tech archives. Testimonies are still hugely important to us and will remain so. Last year, however, we added a repository of digital objects and this is now a vital element of the project. Sharon Healy is the chief architect and policymaker for this repository and has ensured that our cataloguing and preservation processes are based on proven archive practices. 
INEX, the National Internet Exchange, has agreed to provide long-term data storage facilities with all the necessary backup and security. We're confident, therefore, that the repository will be accessible to researchers for decades to come. We have already carried out a demonstration project to raise awareness of the repository. We selected and scanned 50 documents that chart the evolution of the Irish software industry over 25 years. We gathered policy papers from state agencies, submissions to government from industry bodies and professional associations, plus trade directories and academic publications. This source material is now preserved as a set of digital files with explanatory metadata. Because this is a conference about web archives, I would like to finish with a suggestion for web historians. One of the problems with web archives is that many of the early sites have disappeared without trace. Tech Archives has the resources to record accounts by the people who are responsible for those sites and to preserve digital artefacts related to them. Tech Archives can fill information gaps. Thank you very much. Please spread the word about this project and get in touch for further information.